Fallout is still selling. If you're one of the players who's a fan of this product, if you're one of the people who bought into this, some of the stuff I'm gonna show you today is pure insanity. By the end of today's video, you should be in awe and terrified. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here. Thank you again for hanging out with me on my channel today for another video. A reminder, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed today's content, to like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notification bell. I do put out new content every single day. And we're only 30 subscribers away from hitting the 24,000 mark. Thanks again, guys. So let's dive right into this, okay? I was kind of curious and I was kind of investigating for a few fans of the channel about what was going on when we took a look at fallout collector boxes in particular okay i did take a look of course at the commander decks but i wanted to really delve in and talk about what's going on with the collector boxes of this particular product because as you guys know the research has shown that most collector boxes go stale and never move off the shelves after about a year even when they go on sale at that point there is very little movement in the market space for collector boxes for magic the gathering as a whole Okay, I mean, there's a right price for everything. We could argue this back and forth. I'm not here to hash up the same old detail. I'm just letting you know, if it's in a store and they're charging full price, you're not buying it. That's just the way it goes, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that it's not a popular product. Doesn't mean somebody doesn't love it. And Fallout is definitely the exception, not the rule, okay? Because people are still looking for Fallout. People are still seeking the cards out. And the singles, unlike what I showed you with the Doctor Who set yesterday, is the polar opposite. And if you didn't see the video yesterday about what's happening with Doctor Who collector boxes, you're going to want to watch that video. It's from yesterday, whenever you watch this one, just go back, it's somewhere in my videos, you'll find it there. Now let's talk about this. Now we know this was a very expensive product. We had some very special uh, surge foils for the uh, collector boxes, as well as the commander deck series. And we had the regular commander decks, which were like, I guess in Canada, 250. And they still sell now. They may not sell quickly like they used to, but the Fallout decks are still selling right now. But you really want to know what's going on with the collector boxes? This is what we're going to get into. First off, let's just show you what's going on. Well, if you're looking right here, this is face-to-face -face games in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And as you can see, it's completely sold out. And look at the price tag, $824.99, completely sold out. And they're not the only ones. When you take a look at a place like 401 Games, and of course they have it marked down because they have none in stock, it's $6.99 uh, and it's sold out as well. Very interesting. Sold out, sold out. And by the way, when I compared this to a whole bunch of other local stores that don't even list this stuff, they were all sold out right away. Okay? They didn't have a huge allocation. It got bought out. It's just, it's fairy dust. It's gone. You can't get it. Now, that's not all. Take a look at this one. So if we go and we take a look at things like um, eBay Canada, I'm just showing you a couple of the completed recent sales. Here's uh, the 10th and the 11th. We had a box go for 657 and we had another box go for 888. But look at the shipping charges, like 90 bucks a shipping. Okay, 87 and $80 Canadian to ship the product, which means really you're adding basically 100 bucks on top. We all know it doesn't cost that much, but eBay charges that elusive tax now in Canada. So it's getting really hard to sell things and you have to charge a lot more money. That's why eBay's not doing well. Guys, it's insane to see the prices where they are. And then of course, let's list out and take a look at TCG Player. You can see here, 550 US, 564 US. Of course, it's not every single day. There's a lot of gaps in there, but that's also because there's not tons of inventory available. There's not a lot of people shipping over the border to Canada, the US, okay? And a lot of places I've looked at, even overseas, completely gone. Now, on one hand, I find this incredibly funny because that means Wizards of the Coast has left money on the table. They walked away thinking they'd made a good deal and then they, when they looked over back over their shoulder and saw what was happening on the secondary market, they see exactly what they missed out on. They missed out on the insane price increase we've seen due to lower allocation numbers and stores not, you know, not sure how things were going to sell. Which means when things finally did sell out, nothing else was coming to market, especially collector boxes. You now have somebody who probably owns a lot of these collector boxes and probably doles them out very sparingly to keep the price high. There's a lot of market manipulation. But Wizards of the Coast is just sitting back in the ivory tower looking down saying, what did we do? What, 
What happened? We we don't have we, we lost money. I mean, we made lots of money, guys, but we lost money. There's money that's down there that should be ours, and now it's not. It went to somebody else out there. Oh, what are we going to do? Like, how can we fix this next time? Because there's always a next time. It is insane to think that those collector boxes sold at that price. Now, of course, you guys know that Lord of the Rings from Universes Beyond, the special boxes, you know, the special edition, those have gone up to like a thousand bucks. Okay? I... I I knew people were talking about it, but when I looked at the actual sales records for those, they weren't nearly as strong as what we're seeing here. And the wish list item, which means people are looking to buy it at a set price, but they're looking to get this product. They're looking to still buy it. I don't care if they're flipping it or opening it. They desire to get their hands on it for whatever reason it may be. I have no idea. The singles in the market are selling daily. I have a coworker. She doesn't play magic, but she is a fan a fan of Fallout and the TV show and the game. So she is collecting every single card and she doesn't play. She's just picking them up whenever she sees them cheap and she buys seven or eight or nine of them at a local shop and she'll she'll walk out with them and then she says, what do you think of these? And I'm like, that's great artwork. And that's how it's going. And that's, that's the difference with Wizards of the Coast when they put this together. They thought they had a certain audience for sure. But they knew after the sales really started taking off that they missed out on something. So the awe of how popular the product is, is right there for everyone to see. The desirability is still there for this product at the right price. But the fear, the scariness that you should be thinking about at home right now, is what will Wizards of the Coast do next time? Because they have a habit of looking down on things, 30th anniversary, I'm looking at you, and saying, that was really popular. That's secondary market. Those are really expensive cards. We should make something similar, but just jack up the price like 50 bucks, just a little bit more, and keep the allocation tight. And that way more money comes back. That's the way they think. They're a company. They got to bring as much money in as they can. And everywhere they see a revenue stream, they are going to tap into it. That can mean secret layers from Fallout. That could be a whole new edition of Fallout. Or it could be an entirely different IP that they think is going to be big. Marvel! <clears throat> Sorry. Wolverine Deadpool. And maybe do something crazy like jack up the prices before we've seen what's going to happen. They may have had a box priced at $4.99. And now it's going to be $5.69. We don't know. But after seeing what happened with Fallout and the gap of time we have between these products... It is something to seriously consider and understand that a company like this is definitely going to go that route. This is something I would do, so it's definitely something they would think of doing. The marketing would recommend it. The R&D would recommend it. And yeah, they may pump some power level cards up. They may add a little bit of spice to the set, but they are thinking about it. And that is where the scary part comes in because then thinking about it means it's probably going to happen sooner or later. Even if it's not the most recent upcoming products, it's definitely on their radar because they follow the market so closely and they know where all the sales are happening and they know what cards are popular. So they can rent those into a new R&D cycle, similar cards, new artwork, of course. They can run up the prices a little bit, judging by what they've seen on the market. Even if the market changes, that doesn't mean they won't try to do this, okay? Guys, this is giving you a lot to think about. I hope you guys are thinking about this because I know I am and so are a lot of the people I know. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with me on the channel today. And of course, don't forget to shop smart, shop S smart, little evil dead. And of course, we got to go back to Army of Darkness 1990s. But guys, either way, it's still a great game. This is a phenomenal set to see it being so desired by the player base. And of course, even like just fans of the of the TV show and the games picking up the singles for whatever reason. Like I saw even with the Brothers War Transformers. I have friends who just love the toys and bought the cards because they're super cheap now. Crazy. Guys, thanks again for hanging out. See you tomorrow. Welcome back to the end of the video. What you're seeing right now is truly an awesome sight. These are my patrons. They're basically the financiers of this channel because without them we wouldn't have a channel at all so thanks again to each and every one of my patrons and my youtube membership members for making these daily videos possible without them there wouldn't be a channel right now so thanks again guys have a great one. Oh yeah did you see that coming guys i never would have predicted fallout would go this far i didn't in my earlier videos of course we had to change our minds when we saw the sales 
but I'm looking at that price tag and knowing how Wizards of the Coast thinks, when you look at products like this, right? When we're taking a look at these bad boys, a couple packs in there and stuff, they're gonna push the envelope. It's gonna be scary. It's not gonna come right away. Uh, between me and you and the ramble jamble here at the end, it usually takes them about 18 to 24 months. So I think the pricing will stay consistent for, for Marvel, maybe a few bucks up just because it is a premium product uh, and something players are gonna want so they know that they'll change the pricing. But going forward, another premium product coming along is probably gonna get marked up, okay? They've done it before, they're gonna do it again. It's because we as the players keep accepting these new prices that this keeps happening and we're just one small voice here and many of us fall prey to the FOMO of these products, myself included. Bloomboro, I couldn't hide from that, I had to buy it. You think I'm not buying Marvel? Of course I'm buying Marvel. Did they put Punisher in there? Daredevil? Wolverine? Deadpool? Juggernaut? Colossus? I'm going to fall down a rabbit hole. Oh, I'm going to stop right now. Thanks again, guys. Have a great one. Who's your favorite Marvel character? Put that in the comments section.